Hey everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and today we're going to ask that age-old question. Is it better to set the audio level for your digital mode by ear or with a deviation meter or possibly a spectrum analyzer? Well, I think we really know the answer to that. Uh, of course, setting with a meter is always going to be more accurate, but how unaccurate are the methods that we currently use today to set AFSK audio volume for our digital mode? So that is the question and we're going to take a dive into it. Uh, oh, before we get started, do me a favor, will you? Click on the subscribe button down below. It really helps me get my videos in front of more people. And if you like my content, click the like button. Oh, and don't forget to click the notify to get notified when I release new videos. So with all that out of the way, all right, let's dive into which one is better. Well, okay, we've got our test set up all set to go. We've got a FT um, 2900. This is a 75 watt radio. Really nice off-roaders run it all the time, and it's an inexpensive radio to purchase. Uh, I've set this up as a dedicated data radio uh, for emergencies. Now, it's hooked to a signal link, and the signal link goes directly into the mic port because this does not have a data connection on it. Also, the speaker in the back, a speaker port for the external speaker, goes into the signal link as well. So really, the signal link is just looking like an external mic and an external uh, uh, speaker to the radio. Anyway, with the signal link plugged into my computer, the only thing left, of course, is the antenna, and I've got a little old dummy load over here. This silver box is actually an attenuator and we'll use that when we uh, hook up the spectrum analyzer to take a look at how well I did using my ears okay now part of the interesting part about using your ears to set this stuff is that means you need another radio that you can tune to the frequency that you can get the speaker semi close to you so you can hear those minute differences and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute but let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we need to do to make sure that our signal link and everything is all set for what we're looking at doing. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop open the um, settings program in Windows 10. And I'm going to go to system and I'm going to go here to sound. And what's very important, if I just plug this in and I didn't do anything with it, I really need to take a look at what output and input Windows has decided to make the default. I don't want the default to be my signal link I just plugged in. That'd be terrible. Every time uh, Windows went beep or boop or whatever, it would go through my radio. So I don't want to do that. All right. So this is where I can verify that. I can go to the pull down and make sure that it's going out my uh, uh, speakers, high definition audio and my microphone, which is a uh, USB PNP microphone. And I've also gone and looked when I plugged it in at my device manager to see what my actual device is. I'm going to now go over, I'm going to click on the sound control panel under related settings. Uh, this may actually, if you've got a low resolution monitor, this may actually be underneath all of this stuff. Okay, but let's go ahead and click on that and it's going to pop up the traditional manager. I'm going to go ahead and close the configuration here and we're going to look solely at the sound setup. Okay, so here I've got speaker uh, speakers for USB audio codec. I happen to know that that is my new signal link. All right, so I'm going to double click on that and it's going to pull up all the settings. Now, Level, typically when you open this thing up for the first time, the level's at 100, and we don't want that, okay? As a matter of fact, we're going to turn it down to zero just temporarily. We're going to take a look at our enhancements. We're going to make sure that they're disabled. A lot of times they won't be disabled, 
uh, when you just install it the first time, so make sure you disable it. Advanced, pretty much the default is fine. Usually it comes up right. Um, you know, I want to allow applications to take exclusive control, and I want to give exclusive mode applications priority. Now, this uh, spectral sound, I'm not really sure what that is. I just want to make sure it's off. You can see a pattern here. I want to make sure anything that is going to alter the audio is dead and shut off. I want the audio just to go from my computer out to the signal link, right? So I've got all that done. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to hit OK. Now, remember we talked about every time the computer beeping, you know, it would come out the radio and that would be a bad thing. In a lot of cases, it doesn't really hurt to go to sounds here in the main sound thing and just set it to no sounds, okay? Now, I can't do that because I get audible warnings on this machine. Uh, I just have to verify that the speaker output, the default output, always goes to my computer speakers and not to any other device. So I'd keep an eye on that, right? But... If you don't, if this is like a dedicated machine or a laptop where you really don't have anything playing anything, you can shut all that off. You don't need to worry about it. And now that we've got speaker set, I want to take a look at recording, right? So this is the mic portion or the line in. And for USB audio codec, we're going to double click on it. And... We're going to look at listen. We're going to make sure that listen to this device is not checked. Okay. We're going to take a look at our levels. We're going to turn this all the way to zero too. We don't want any kind of output going on until we set it up. All right. And under advanced, the defaults usually work fine. Okay. We're going to click OK on that. Now, we are going to move over and take a, uh, take a gander here at our signal link. And the signal link, we are going to turn the TX volume all the way down, the RX volume all the way down, and we're going to make sure delay is turned all the way to the left, just like it's turned off, because we don't want any delay. Delay is only there if you need the uh, system to stay keyed longer than the amount of time that audio is coming out of the signal link, okay? And 99.99% of the time, you don't need any delay. And delay will just screw you up because the delay will cause you not to be able to hear the response from the station you're trying to connect to, all right? A little word to the wise. Now, we've got all the volumes off here. I am going to open up uh, sound modem. And sound modem uh, is one of uh, the best AFSK packet interfaces I've ever seen. Okay. Uh, I happen to really like it. There are detailed videos on how to set this up. So I'm not going to show you the whole kit and caboodle here. What I am going to show you is the devices portion of this and I need to make sure that my device here is set to uh, for output device speakers for USB codec because that is my uh, signal link and input is line for USB codec. That is my input device. Yours may be different so make sure you check okay. Um, and, of course, my push to talk. How am I going to make push to talk on that radio? Well, it actually is done with the signal link. When the signal link sees uh, a carrier go up on the, um, uh, on the signal link, okay, it will go ahead and key the radio. Now, we have to make sure that there's enough going in the radio for it to key, okay? Now, at this time, I'm going to click OK on this, and I'm going to move this off to the side, and I'm going to open up my playback, and I'll, I'll show you me doing this. 
I'm going to open back by double clicking the speakers here. I got to move this off to the side before I do that. All right. So I now have the speakers portion of my control panel here. Uh, and I'll put that up where you can see it. And I am going to click on levels. And again, my level is set to zero up there, right? So I'm going to turn on my HT and I am going to change to that frequency. Let's see. Uh, and I am now on my HT. I'm on 145090, just like my radio. And I am going to go ahead, and I want you to watch the signal link over here. Remember, the volumes are down. When I go here, though, and I click on calibration, pulls this little window up, okay, and let me go back here. I am going to now tell it to give me a high tone, okay? Now, this is actually sending a high tone to the signal link, but if you look over at the signal link, the push to talk red light has not come on. I need to bring up the volume from the computer high enough to turn it on. So I'm going to move it up. I just got carrier. Okay. Now that's at 40. That's awfully low. I'm going to take it up to 50 and I'm going to leave it there and I will go ahead and stop that. Okay. And now with that at 50, I can now begin to adjust the signal length. So here's how this works. I am going to be listening to the high tone coming out of sound modem going to the signal link being transmitted from this dummy load on this radio and I'm going to turn it up to the point that it doesn't sound like it's getting any louder. Then I'm going to pull it back till it sounds like it's starting to get quieter. And then I'm going to try to put it right on that edge, okay, of where it's not getting any louder. But if I go down any, it gets quieter, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Here we go. So I've got did carrier. I'm going to reach over here, and I'm going to start to turn the volume up. Up. I blew it. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. I actually did both tones. All I, I only want the high tone because it's easier for me to distinguish. There we go. And here we go again. I'm going to say that that's pretty good right there. All right. So that's set. So this wouldn't be complete if I didn't show you how to also set up the receive, right? So I am going to go over here and I'm going to close this and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to recording. See, that's what's interesting. A lot of people miss the point that to the computer, a microphone is listening to the radio. And a speaker is playing out the transmitter, okay? So we adjust the speaker for the gain on the transmit side. And we adjust the microphone on the computer to the reception of signal. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pop over here and just double click on this line right there. Okay, I'm going to move it out of the way, right? Because I'm going to stick it up here. And I'm going to look at my levels. Now, a couple things. I am just going to back this out just for a second. I want to talk about the controls on the radio. So here's the normal volume control. I've got to pick a place I want to keep this all the time. And I'm going to keep it right there. So I know that when I'm going to do digital, I've got it off here at uh, basically 9 o'clock. Now... I am going to 
turn the squelch all the way down. And what I'm, you notice I get it busy there. And then what I am going to look at is the waterfall here in the bottom just above my head. I want to set this at 50. I'm thinking of another setup. So I'm going to set this at 50 and I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to go over to the receive audio on here. And I'm going to turn that up. Ah, got a little bit of reaction. Now I'm going to turn this up until I get to all green over at the side right there. Okay, I want to crank it up until that's about it. If I go too far, you're going to start to see yellow. See those little yellow dots? I know it's really hard, but we want to come down a little from those yellow dots, right? So just about there. I can really, see, I can make it look completely yellow. I'm going to pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, doing nothing but looking at this waterfall, right? And get it to the point where... I like it right there. I like that green. That green is making me feel like this should work, okay? So, if you look, we've got our settings set, set over here on our signal link. So, with that, I can now go ahead and use the digital, right? Well, yes, you can. Do we know what our settings are? for the transmit. Are we at 3.5 plus minus um, deviation? Well, we don't. But you know what? We're gonna in a minute. Stand by. Well, okay, so during this little adventure, I wanted to see if there was something I could come up with that would be easy to use a, like a real inexpensive spectrum analyzer, something like the Tiny SA, to be able to actually pump an audio signal into uh, the signal link and then be able to somehow determine when the deviation of that audio signal was at 3.5 uh, kilohertz, right? Plus minus. And ironically, I came across this thing called the Bessel Null FM Deviation Measurement. I haven't completely figured out how to use this, but it's, it's an interesting thought, and let me share it with you. So it turns out that if you take down there, you see where it says Carrier Nulls, it has five of them listed, and next to it, it has a dev ratio, if I take that first carrier null and I say, okay, my deviation should be 3.5 kilohertz, and I divide 3.5 by that 2.44, uh, 2.40466, let's just call it 2.405, that will give me an audio frequency that I can modulate into the carrier and it will have a dip at the actual frequency on the um, spectrum analyzer when it hits 3.5. And I kind of scratched my head on that one. But, you know, hey, if you've taken the general and the extra test, you know that, boy, some of the stuff with RF is pretty doggone amazing on how it works. So... Uh, I decided, well, let's play around with it. So let me show you the result. Now, uh, this works a lot better on an actual, uh, using a signal generator and then injecting this frequency in as modulation into a generated signal. And you can really see it drops down to null, just like they say. Uh, I don't really get that on the radio, I get a dip, and it's a substantial dip, but I don't necessarily get that null. Um, my next video, I may just do a demonstration of the Bessel null uh, 
in it just to show you using a signal generator and maybe some of you folks much smarter than I can comment on that. Uh, but let's go ahead, let's do the math. I've got 3.5 and I'm going to divide it by 2.405 and that gives me 1.455 hertz or uh, kilohertz as an audio frequency. Now I just so happen to have an audio frequency set up to do that. So let me get this out of the way. Now I'm using a open source piece of software here, uh, which is called, um, oh my goodness, what is it called? I'm sorry, uh, uh, Tenacity. Now, if you've worked in open source audio, you probably have heard of a program that is called uh, Audacity. And Audacity had been around for a long time, but apparently uh, there was concerns because it was purchased and they started using um, oh, uh, uh, information that they gathered from the users of the software. In other words, they were kind of spying on the people that were using this open source software after the license to the software was sold to a company. Uh, a lot of people jumped ship. Well, Tenacity is one of the results of the, that ship jumping, as it were, and this is a fork of um, Audacity without any of that stuff in it, okay? And some neat modifications. It works pretty well. Anyway, uh, I've set it up in here, and I am going, this actually is uh, just one long, clean, one uh, 1,455 hertz audio signal, and I'm going to push it out the speaker on the uh, the speaker port on the signal link. So I'm going to move this over to the other screen. You'll have to excuse me. Let me pop up the uh, signal uh, or, or the uh, uh, spectrum analyzer. Okay. Now I have my center set at 145.090. And I've got a 10, uh, 10 kilo, uh, kilohertz spread here, right, from, uh, for a span. And I'm going to pull up my audio controls here. Um, let's see. Give me just a second. All right. And I'm actually, it's at 50 right now. I am going to crank this down to about 40. Okay, we know that 50 was adjusted pretty well for uh, 3.5. We just finished doing that. So let's see how this works. I am going to go ahead and put a carrier on here. Okay, with the modulation, that tone being modulated. And again, uh, the frequency is 1455 hertz. Now, you see where I have my marker up here. This is the center. Okay, I am going to increase my audio level with my mouse. See what's happening? Look at what's happening. See how it's dropping? Now right there is 50. Now if I go past 50, it's going to come back up. So I'm pretty close to the center at 50, right? Isn't that crazy? So... If I do this with a signal generator injecting modulation onto uh, a frequency, I'm going to see it drop all the way down to null. But the neat part about this is, do you know what that actually means? Well, let me pop this over again to uh, the uh, analog uh, demod, and there we are, right where we want to be with our um, deviation, okay? So, I thought that would be neat to show you. Anyway, uh, you know, hey, thanks for joining me. I hope I've kind of blown away some of the illusions that you have to have this test equipment to, to set up digital, okay? You don't. You don't. We've just proven that, okay? You need a good ear, you know. You might need your grandson's ear. Every once in a while, I'll pull him and say, hey, 
You figure out what they're saying? Anyway, but that's what grandkids are for. With that, well, let me tell you. I want to thank you very much for joining me for this video. And uh, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, and again, uh, I hope you now know how to set your audio levels because that's going to be important. All right. This is Stu, AG6AG. And uh, oh, hey, do me a favor again. If you have a chance, go down to the bottom and hit the subscribe button for me. And if you like this video, for goodness sakes, let me know. Any questions, anything you want to say, uh, if you want to strike a conversation up about what we've been talking about, make a comment down below. I try to answer my comment questions within a couple days. I mean, I still have a full-time job and everything, but, uh, you know, hey, uh, I'll get to that question. I'll do my best to answer it. All right. Anyway, with that, my name is Stu AG6AG, and I hope to hear you out there on the air.